Fuel specifications are our requirements for the products that we sell and they tend to be based on a, a whole raft of different uh, um, items. Things like uh, mandatory government requirements are built into fuel specifications. Some of it is about making sure that the vehicles operate the way they're designed to operate and some of it actually is, is based on uh, climatic conditions in certain, uh, certain locations. So all of that goes into making sure that our products are fit for purpose and perform the way that they're designed to, to perform in the engine. Well, there's a few things that drive uh, specification changes. The, the primary one is really engine technology. Uh, people want to have the latest engines in their cars, they want power, they want performance, they want fuel economy, and they also want good performance in terms of emissions. In fact, what governments are doing is they're saying, well, we need to regulate the performance of the emissions that come out of the vehicle, and the, the thing that that impacts with the fuels is really the sulfur content. Sulfur is really the enabler to bring in those latest engines so that you get the best possible performance. But the thing they really love about Chevron is, is Tecron, because Tecron keeps those engines clean so that they perform through their life the way that they were designed to perform. Now, clean engines have better performance in terms of the way they drive, they have better emissions, and car manufacturers just love Tecron. The European spe uh, specifications are the ones that most of the world tends to adopt. Uh, they, they're global, um, they're used right across uh, international products. So you hear people talk about Euro 2, Euro 3, Euro 4, that all relates back to the sulphur content. Probably for the last 10 years we've been investing a lot in uh, hydro treating and the hydro treating process at the refinery is the one that takes the sulphur out. Okay, the, the European standards are all revolve around sulphur. What we see is that we continue to increase in terms of the Euro standards. Euro 4, for instance, is 50 parts per million for both gasoline and diesel. And ultimately, Euro 5 is, is, is only 10 ppm. And what that allows is new technologies to go into those vehicles that reduces the emissions and gives us a cleaner environment. The other really interesting thing that's happening also is biofuels and biofuels has had a fairly significant impact on the business over the last five years. You know, in some countries like Malaysia, we're selling uh, biodiesel, uh, B5. Uh, we've got that in uh, the Philippines, we've got that in uh, Thailand as well. Uh, we also use bioethanol, which is blended into our gasoline, and we have blends like E10 that, that are sold in Thailand uh, and, and the Philippines as well. And the biofuels are really, really challenging because they're not, obviously they're not made from conventional oil, they're made from uh, biofeedstocks, and there's a whole raft of different feedstocks that are used. Things like coconut in uh, the Philippines, uh, palm oil in uh, both Malaysia and, and Thailand. So these have very, very different characteristics and it's quite challenging to blend that product into the fuel and make sure that we can still provide a product that's fit for purpose. Well, biofuels tend to be more expensive than conventional fuels. Um, there, are, there are certain considerations you have to take into account. Um, there is no point in ploughing you know, virgin rainforest to plant more palm, that's, that's not sustainable. But it can be done in a sustainable way and there are groups that are looking at uh, developing guidelines to make sure that the industry does stay sustainable. I think longer term, the Chevron view is that we will move away from fuels that are based on food type feedstocks and actually move into uh, non-food sources that would get uh, converted into fuels that are more like conventional fuels and, and less like the biofuels used today. Thank you.